I went and got my tickets a few days before this film came out, and in my excitement I uploaded this picture to Twitter. And an unhealthy amount of people were like, Jack, that is a big ticket, why have you got a jumbo sized ticket? Guys, perspective, I haven't got a massive hand right now, that is just The Amazing Spider-Man. Now before we do this, we need to establish something. Big Spider-Man fan, love the TV shows, know a lot about the comics, and I've been waiting for this film for a good two years or so. Was I disappointed? <gasps> nope. So what worked? The characters, the acting, the casting for everyone that was in this film was perfect. Notable performances were obviously Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Spidey himself. We see a different side to the character than we have in the previous Sam Raimi movies. He's angry at the loss of his parents, but he doesn't cry about it. Toby. He deals with it by using humour, which makes him a lot more likeable, and it's truer to the original character. Win-win. Emma Stone plays Gwen Stacy. Now, she doesn't stray too far away from her usual quirky style of performing, but her chemistry with Andrew was good, it worked, and I believed her as a science geek. Finally, Martin Sheen is a delight as Uncle Ben. He's funny and he gives off a warmth that really makes you connect with him with the short amount of time he has on screen. Visually, the film is stunning too, especially when spider Man's swinging through the city and that. That is just... Oh. You can just regress back to a child when that's happening. Just someone swinging through the city and you're just like, yeah, this? Storytelling. The film was directed by Mark Webb. Pause for obvious jokes. No laughter. And we continue. He did a great job. He seems to really understand the characters and where he wants everything to go. Now, what doesn't work about it? The pacing is a bit weird. It can be very fast at points and almost feel like it's skimming over certain details, but then it'll cut to something that's quite slow. And this can actually be a bit distracting or uncomfortable. Now, I did like the script, but it was stronger towards the start, and as it went on, it became a bit more formulaic. You could predict what was gonna happen. I knew how each scene was gonna end, but that was also because of the trailers. Don't watch the trailers. If I hadn't watched all the things that Sony had released in this film, I would have been impressed with so much stuff that was just shown like it was nothing in the trailers. A lot of people have been complaining about the lizard, saying that he's underused or underdeveloped, but I didn't really have a problem with that. He facilitated the role as a villain, that's all I wanted from him. I wanted to see Spider-Man. The biggest problem I feel that I have with this film is that you can feel Sony interfering with it. They not only stuck their fingers in the Spider-Man pie, but they took a piece, chewed it, spat it out and put it back. A lot of storylines and characters are introduced in the film but never really finished. For example, Irvin Khan's character, he's just he just goes away halfway through the film. You just, you just stop seeing him. But all of this bothered my enjoyment of the film by about one or two percent. I had a huge smile on my face throughout the entire thing. I had a great time and I really recommend you go see it. But what did you think of The Amazing Spider-Man? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below because I'll be having a conversation with you this time because I'm very interested in Spider-Man. I want to know what your thoughts are. But until next time, my name is Jack Howard, vlogging for GBposters.com and I'll see you next time I see a film. I've just realised that I'm wearing these glasses and it makes me look like I want to look like Peter Parker but actually I was writing my review and had to have glasses on to look at the computer. I'm just going to stop. Yeah, I just wanted to look like Peter Parker. <laughs>